Hey everyone, welcome to Go Midwest Fishing. If the canvas on your pop-up camper looks anything like mine, it's time to get it replaced. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and how much it costs, so stick around. Alright, let's get right to the point. You want to know how much this is going to cost. So, my camper here has uh, two slide outs, a bunk on each end, and a middle slide out for the dining table. So three slide outs, the complete canvas, it was $1,100 just for the canvas. Now depending on your model, you may have to mail your old canvas in. Uh, a lot of them require that. That cost uh, just over $300 to mail in. So you can add that to the cost. All right, so how much is your camper gonna cost? It depends on the model and the year of it. Um, most of them are gonna run between $800 and about $1,500. The average being right around $1,000 to $1,200, I see most of them. If you want a better idea how much it's going to cost you to put a new canvas on yours, I made a blog post and I did a bunch of comparisons between different companies and different models and what it's going to cost for each one of those. You can find that at go Midwest Fishing uh, forward slash canvas. So I'll put a link right down below. Find a nice little uh, chart. I uh, went and researched all the different companies and laid it out for you there. So that should help out a lot. All right, stick around as I show you the entire process of removing the canvas, boxing it up, sending it off, how I decided on the place I got my new canvas from, and then once I received it, I'll show you how I installed it all. So it's the beginning of February here in Minnesota, and now is the time to replace the canvas if you're going to do it. As soon as the camping season starts, it's going to take a really long time. I just called the canvas place, and they said it's about four to six weeks right now, and by next week they told me it's going to be like 10 to 14 week wait. So I got a camping trip in June, so I need to get this done, so I'm going to try to get it off today, and um, they need to ship this off to their place so they can copy it. Alright, I have a Palomino Elite 9147's model number. It's more of a uh, full-size pop-up camper. It's a little bigger than most. So there's a few options when you replace the canvas. You can do it in just sections, like just the side walls. You can do just the pieces that go over your bed, or you can just replace the whole entire thing. So I'm going to replace the entire canvas on this camper and I got a quote of just over $1,100 to do that. If you have a different style camper, a different brand, if you're just doing pieces, uh, prices will vary. So I'll go over that later in the video. But for now, I'm going to remove all the canvas here and I'll show you how to do that. All right, before I pull the canvas off, I just kind of want to show you what the canvas looks like. This had a, a leaky roof at one point and I replaced the whole roof on it. I actually had a video about that. You can see it. I'll uh, put a link in the description or put a tile at the end here. But um, the canvas was sitting with water on it and kind of got moldy and discolored. And I noticed when I camped in it last year during a storm, it just leaked water all over. I put waterproofing all over the outside and still it, it didn't help a whole lot. So uh, here's what we're dealing with. So you can see all these moldy stained spots. Um, the main culprit here is right along the seams. They seem to be ripping in the uh, dripping out of those seams. The ceiling's pretty dirty. And I even tried putting a few patches on it. Right here, I mean, there's literally holes through the uh, flaps here. And I think this is the good side. The other side's a little worse. As far as the side walls go, they're, they're not too bad. They have a few stains, but they seem to not leak a whole lot. This is a little pull-out kitchen area, so we got three wings on this. And uh, yeah, this one didn't leak a whole lot, but you can see it's still, it's, it's pretty nasty looking. So I decided just to, just to replace the whole thing because the can new canvas we're gonna get is not gonna match anyway, so I'll make it look nice and make the whole thing match. You can see where the bottom meets the camp here is just some screws. So just uh, pulling off these screws and the bottom should come right off. That's pretty easy. Here you go, just a tiny little screw. And I dropped it. Alright, once we got all these screws out of the outside, look on the inside, you can see it's just a uh, piece there that fits up into this channel. It's a matter of just, just wiggling that out of that. It's right off. So now on the ends of the bed, same deal, they just have some screws in there. So just pull these off the end of the bed. I took these out. You can see they're right up inside. 
The canvas on the sides of the bed, it's actually just Velcro down to this piece of wood in there. It holds the bed up. I got the bottom all disconnected. Now to do the top, it's just as easy. There's only one spot here you gotta watch out for is where the wires run up to the ceiling here. It's in this little enclosed deal. There's no zip or anything on it. And since we're replacing it anyway, I'm just gonna take a scissors and cut right up this uh, little tube here and just pull them out. Cut any of the wires while I'm doing this. Good. There. Here's all our wires. These canvas pieces come off in pieces, so the pieces over the bed and the sides, they're all separate pieces, so um, they're joined together with a big zipper here. Should we just be able to do this? That'll make it easier to manage and take them off in sections instead of the whole thing at once. All right now for the top, same deal. I'm just going to pull some screws out of here. And to be honest with you, I don't even know if uh, most campers have the top here screwed in. It just slides inside a channel just like the bottom side. Um, I put some screws in there just to make sure it stays in doesn't fall out. But all it does is just pop right out. There you go. This little white piece of trim here just sits down in there. Pull it all the way up. Here's a closer look of uh, the top channel here. Just pull it right out of it. It's pretty simple. Canvases down. A big pile right there. Depending on which camper you have, they might already have the template for it, so you don't need to send in your canvas. For mine, it's all the Palominos. They're all so different that they need me to take off the old canvas and send it to them. So now I'm going to attempt to box all the stuff up. Hopefully, I have a big enough box and uh, ship it off to them. In the meantime, we can go inside. I'll show you where I'm ordering this from, how much it costs, and if you have a different camper or you just want pieces of the camper, we'll go over the cost of that. I think I decided to go with Bear Creek canvas and they require me to send in the old canvas. So I'm gonna to try to figure out how to take this and box it up in one box, hopefully. It might have to go in two. I don't know, there's a lot of canvas. Here's the biggest box I have, so hopefully I can shove it all in here. If not, I'm gonna to have to put it in two boxes, I think. All right, I got it fit in one box. Now just for a whole bunch of tape, make sure it doesn't fall apart and send it off. All right, there it is all boxed up. Got it taped up pretty good. I ran out of tape there. I might have to find a little more for these corners. And I'll send her off. All right, I just mailed out my old canvas. And just to give you a heads up, I did send it uh, via FedEx two day air and the box was pretty big, it weighed like over 60 pounds, and for two-day air, it cost $336. Uh, I got lucky I worked for the airlines, and it only cost me $84, so I get a 75% discount. So it was worth it for me, but just heads up, if you're going to send out your canvas, it can get quite spendy. So I just want to show you how I chose the place I did for uh, replacing the canvas. If we go on the computer here, we'll see, uh, just search up pop-up camber camper replacement and you get a few choices that come up. Uh, I looked through them all and here's a couple that I, I settled on. We have the uh, right here the Bear Creek Canvas and then down here we got canvasreplacements.com. 
So I looked at both of them. Let's look at canvas replacements. Here's the website. Uh, you can see I put in uh, canvas replacement, went to Palomino, and you get these four options here. So mine would be, I want the complete tent. It's 1998 or newer, and it says $1,270. Add to cart, and basically it's like, check out. And what kind of worried me about this one was, I wasn't really sure what I was getting. It's like you just order it, and how does it know, like, <laughs> you get the right one for your camper and is it the whole thing or just part of it I don't know so it wasn't real clear there what I did like about these guys is you can find them online um, they do have right here some YouTube channel here where it looks like a TV show did a interview with them so you can see here that Man. kind what of shows their college? factory a little bit. We can make and, uh, a new tent and usually and we try to stay fairly close to the original color. So I like that you kind of see what's going on there and who they are and how they're building it. So I like that. I just didn't like their way they're, you ordered it on the website. Um, so let's go to Bear Creek Canvas. This one I actually really like their website. And you go to the pricing tab here and you just put in, I got Palomino 2008 and you can select complete canvas or partial canvas. If you do partial canvas, you can select between uh, you know, one wing, two wing, three wing, four wing, and a pickup top, I guess. So, so put in the complete canvas, and then uh, you select your model. So I have a three wing model, so when I select that, it tells you it's $1,125. So it's over $100 cheaper than the other place. Now for ordering this, uh, just go to the ordering tab and they have this sheet here you fill out. You can see you just put in your name address and then you put all the information for your camper in there. Uh, the one thing I didn't like about these guys is they offer three colors of canvas and I chose gray. The other two are kind of ugly colors. They're kind of uh, a little bit old school there I think. Um, and they're right in Wisconsin here not too far away and it says to call to make sure this see if they have it in stock or not. So I called and they said, yeah, all Palominos need to be sent in because they, they don't uh, have those in stock and they're all so different that they need to see it. Okay, and one of the main reasons I went with these guys is after doing all the, reading all the reviews on it, I didn't find one bad thing about it. Everyone's like, great quality, they loved it. They really liked uh, the final product once they got it. You know, they even have a testimonials page on here and you know all these people bragging about how great they are, but you know, if you just go online and look up, you know, some unbiased reviews, everyone says it's really good too. Um, when I did call them, there's some older guy answered and it was helpful, so. All right, so there you have it, uh, Bear Creek Canvas. If you want your canvas replaced, I would recommend them. Uh, I haven't got it back yet. They said four to six weeks, so uh, when it comes, I'll uh, show you what it looks like and put it up, and then we'll know for sure what kind of quality they produce. They have a few samples on their website too, so you can click through a few of the campers they've done and you can kind of see it's uh, kind of, I don't really care for the brown color, but there's a few, all these pictures look really old, <laughs> so they could probably use some updating to this. There's a good picture, that's kind of what mine will look like. Mine does have the uh, color on the bottom there. And then I can't remember exactly. I think it's more of a white canvas with like a, a gray trim. So it's, it's not going to come back the same color it was, but I ain't too worried about that. I just want it to you know, look nice and to be waterproof. That's the big thing. So one thing I should mention, uh, camper season's coming up. It's February right now, and they had a four to six week lead time. They told me in a couple weeks it's going to be more like a 14 to 18 week wait because that's when camper season kicks off and everyone's, you know, taking out their campers and realizing they need new canvas and they get really backed up. So if you're gonna put new canvas on, I'd suggest doing it like in the middle of the winter, you know, December through January is probably your quickest time. Once uh, the end of February comes up, it starts, uh, a lot of orders start coming in and it might take a while to get your canvas back. So mine should be here in about four to six weeks. Can't wait to get it and uh, put it back on. All right, the new canvas arrived from Bear Creek Canvas. Actually arrived a couple weeks ago. I just haven't had time to put it on yet. It's now beginning of April. It's gonna be a beautiful 50 some degrees today. It's calm out. Had a big storm run through last night and everything's clearing out. So it should be an awesome day to put the canvas on. I'm not even opened this up yet. 
the box I sent off weighed 60 pounds. This one on here says it weighs 50 pounds. So it's a little bit lighter. Be careful uh, opening this box up with the razor blade. <laughs> now, if you notice, the box they sent is about not even half the size of the one I sent them. So they do a much better job of packing the canvas, I think. Hopefully, it's all in here. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. All right, a little sheet says suggestions for installing canvas on camp with a hard top. And hints for taking care of the top of the, care of the tent top. All right, I'll read that in just a second. Don't wanna bore you with all that stuff. And there it is, the invoice. Ooh. All right there, $1,100 exactly. Winter special minus $25. So it was $1,125, which is what they quoted me on their website. And uh, yeah, I didn't even know they gave a discount for doing it during the winter. Ooh, looks nice. I don't know how to get it out of here. It comes in this little plastic bag. Alright, now if I just dump it out. Oh! There you go. I do like the gray color. It's pretty nice. They got the, the white trim on it. I think it's going to look pretty good. Alright, we got some more goodies in the box here. First thing, what do we got here? Big old notice. Tent campers designed for temporary short time use. Having it in the popped up position expose the elements for extended periods of time can get really reduced. All right, they got their business card. And then here's what we need. Oh good, they gave us all new uh, buttons. All right, looks like because uh, you have buttons that snap around the outside and looks like I'm assuming they did not actually put the buttons on. They give you all the buttons in a bag right here. It's all kind of loose. Um, I'll have to figure out. It looks like you use a, a pliers and uh, crimp them together. They got these two little pieces in here that you put the buttons in and then smash them together onto the canvas. So, um, yeah. I guess we'll put those on once we get the canvas on, see where the buttons are. Which I was kind of wondering about that, if how do they know exactly where all the buttons are placed so they line up correctly. And uh, that's how they do it. They make you put on the buttons. Okay. Oh, <laughs> they give you a little, uh, little decal too. You can stick somewhere, Bear Creek canvas. Oh, where to begin? Let's see. Throw the box. We don't need the box. Throw it out here. So it came off in one, two, three, yeah, four pieces. I think that was all, yeah. Pretty sure it's four pieces. So now we gotta figure out which piece is which piece. Mmm. Kinda has that new car smell. <laughs> Put it down here in the couch. Give me a little more room down here in the couch to unravel it. Oh, it is heavy. And it's long. Oh. All right, so here's what it looks like unraveled. I have one long piece here. All right, as I'm unraveling, I notice they do have it all as one piece. They didn't send it back in separate pieces, so I'm gonna unzip it, separate them into pieces to make it easier to hang up. Mm -hmm. 
So far I'm really impressed with the canvas quality. It looks really nice. <laughs> Just finding which end is which is the hard part here. All right, there's the top or bottom. It's got the little uh, hard piece in there, like a little hard piece of rubber in there that you can shove up into those channels. Well, here's another zipper. All right, we got one piece attached. All right, what is this piece? It's got a window on it. It's got a little flap to open. Uh, let's see. Thinking. So we got the two sides. The one is interrupted by the door, so. This side's gonna be one long piece, this side's gonna be two shorter pieces. Yeah. So this one must go on this side. All right, let's get the other stuff out of the way and get at least one piece up. All right, from what I've seen, they say to put the bottom in first and then put the top in. So we'll start with this piece here and start tucking the bottom into this little channel. Like I said, this this little piece here is like a rubber, little rubber piece sewn in there, so it'll stay rigid. Just flip it around and tuck it up into the channel. I'm sure it's going to be a lot harder going in than it did coming out. That ain't too bad. It's actually going in quite easy. Oh, it's gonna look so good. The question is whether I got it lined up right where it's supposed to be or not. Now, as I'm getting close to the end here, I'm just, you know, gotta see if it's lined up correctly or not. Looks like um, maybe, I think the zipper should be kind of right in the middle of this hole over here. So the zipper here should probably I think before is lined up right in the middle of this pole. Pretty close to it. So I need to shove it down a little, so I'm just gonna grab it, pull it a little bit. Just go like that. Let's see. Oh, that's the inside, yeah. So this this little flap here actually wraps around this pole. So that looks looks about right where it is. So uh, this is the door side, so I'm going to put both pieces on and then make sure the door fits right where it should and kind of pull them into the door to make sure it closes around the door and that'll kind of be my guide there. All the bottom pieces in, let's go put in the top. All right, same thing with the top. Just gonna take that little channel and plug it into this top rail. Kind of guess where it goes for the moment and then shift it over if I need to. I know I had some screws kind of holding it in before. I don't think I'm gonna screw this one in just because I don't wanna wreck this beautiful new canvas. I don't think it's actually necessary. Yeah, actually goes in real easy. All right, that looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna slide it back over towards the door a little. Looks like it's a little bunched up on that end, so. I don't have the camper popped all the way up either, so I'm leaving a little slack so I have room to play with here, and then once I get down, I'll pull it up and stretch it out a little more. It does say uh, the new canvas will be a little looser fitting than the old canvas and over time it kind of uh, shrinks up a little bit and gets a more uh, custom fit to it. 
but after some searching, I found the, the short piece here. So again, we'll start with the, the outside and uh, put the bottom channel in. Just start from one end and just work your way across. It, it slides in a lot, a lot easier than I was expecting, so it's not that hard to do. Anyone could do this job. All right, getting near the this spot again. I think I need to shift it down. I'll do that right now. And a little bit tough getting behind these these uh, brackets here. Get under there. Come on. Got her. There, pull it tight, shift it back and forth where you need it. They got these little flaps here. This just connects um, to the other piece of canvas, to make a nice seal there. Because when the beds slide in and out, uh, it bunches up a little, so you gotta, you know, this will let you tear it off so the that piece will slide by it. All right, let's do the top. Make sure it's all the way in there. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, they got their little uh, logo stitched on here. And looks like it's going to be upside down. So <laughs> actually, I just put the top and the bottom. So I got to pull that out and flip it over. Oh, well, live and learn. All right, back on the outside again, putting it in the right way. And this is going to work a lot better because uh, I'll give you a little close-up view here. If you look right here, they have a little section that goes uh, around this lift beam here to make it easier to put in. That's so, as you saw me just struggling trying to get it behind that beam, well, that's because it wasn't supposed to fit like that. So now we got you, got it, the right piece, goes right around that, it's no problem at all. It also helps with lining it up because now I just put that right where this uh, beam is. I know it's in the correct spot. All right, now let's go inside and do the top. All right, now it should fit perfect. Getting some, so you're touching the camper, getting some grease on my hands and kind of greasing up my nice white canvas there. So I gotta watch where I'm touching. Put it in and I can shift it over to line it up so it's nice and vertical once I'm done. give you a quick look here so this they have these flaps that go around these beams so you see where the seam is right there so you want to make it so this flap is lined up right there so it goes on it nice and vertical right there here's a quick look at the outside it looks like uh, it's temporarily hung up there before we get it all fitted nice and lifted up tight Alright, uh, I think I'll do the other side wall and then we'll do the two bunk ends. Alright, now we're dealing with that one long piece on this side. This one's going to be a little different for a couple reasons. Uh, it's got this third pull out here for the kitchen and it doesn't tuck in like the rest of them here. It actually has snaps so you can see the buttons all the way around. So that's where they gave us those uh, buttons that I'm going to have to install myself once I get this aligned and on correctly. And the other one thing we got to watch out for, uh, you saw when I took this down, they got these wires. And uh, let's see. There it is. And yeah, they do give you a little canvas tube here to run them up through 
But like I said, there's no zipper or anything on that. So I'm gonna actually have to disconnect those wires from underneath, run them through it and reconnect them up uh, where they belong underneath there. All right, let's get started on this one. Same deal here as the little loop to go around this beam right here. Just put that on the inside there. That kind of helps me line it up where it's supposed to be. That side's in now, we just put it on the other side and then uh, like I said, I'll wait till it's all on and looking good and then I'll put those snaps on and buttons here and attach the whole thing. This side here is just really short, it's just this little piece right here. Again, just line it up where the beam is. Yeah, there ain't much to it. Yeah, looks like it's in. Let's go inside. Just like the rest, throw it up top. So it's a little bit longer, so it's a little harder to work with. Ain't too bad. Pick where that flap goes. This beam. Kind of pulling on that end. I wonder if, if I start in the middle, if it would help at all. So I'm going to start where that little uh, tube is for the wires and just kind of line it up with the wires start there. It feels like I had to move that over a little bit. Uh, I think what I'll do is, do I have to raise it up more? Try to put this little support up, get it popped out where it's supposed to be. help a little bit. Let's see, I get the... Got my little uh, support piece here. Oh, I gotta raise, gotta raise up the camper just a little bit to get that to work. I'll be right back. All right, let's see if that was enough. Not quite carries it a little more. All right, that better do it. Yeah, it does. Put the pole in there. Stretch it out. That'll stay. All right, that's, that's looking pretty cool. Oh, getting excited to use the new camper. Well, it's gonna feel like a new camper anyway. All right, continue on with going down the line. Oh, now it's taller, it's harder to reach. <laughs> Do let's see. Yeah, I wonder if. Well, I'll start it over here. I'll have to come back and put this through where the wires are. Get a little better view of that. So I'm going over the top of the wire, so I'm going to pull those wires out and put them down through here. So let's see, maybe I'll, I'll see if I can attach most of the top first and then come back and pull that out and continue sealing that up. Just help hold it up so I know where it's going to be I'm doing this side. Quick peek under the cover, it shows those two wires coming in here. Just got a wire nut, pull them off. And here's the cord for the air conditioner. It goes way back in there and just actually plugs into an outlet. So unplug that. We'll have to pull the pluglet end out. Of, we'll have to pull that uh, plug end off it to be able to fit it through there because it's too big otherwise. Not a big deal, we'll do that now. All right, there's the uh, plug for the air conditioner and it's uh, one of these that you can install yourself. So all you gotta do is pull out those two screws there and just take the wires off and then I can reinstall it when I'm done. Okay, I got my wire end all disconnected. That plug actually had a bunch of burn marks on it and stuff. So I just ended up clipping it because I'll get a new plug for it. But I'll just pull it up, get this one wire. So depending on your camper, you might have different wiring. You're going to have some kind of wiring going up to power lights and stuff on the ceiling. Uh, 
when I bought this camper, the roof was damaged and I actually built this entire roof from scratch and rewired it all myself and stuff like that. So it might look a little different than yours. So if you're curious how to build your own roof, I also made a, a pretty good video on that one. I'll put uh, the link down below if you want to see that one also. Um. All right, now to fish them through here. We have to clip the ends and tape them here so they go through smoothly. I have a fish tape that I can use too, but we'll see if I can just shove them through there. Just put a little tape on the end so they don't split apart and get stuck in there. Do a little one first. tape it to the big one and see if we can't shove them both through at once. If not, I'll go grab the fish tape and we'll do it that way. All right, here it goes. Yeah, in there. So far, so good. Come on, keep going. Helps if this is nice and straight. Yeah, it's out the bottom. There it is. Right there. All right, just pull it on through. Boom. I love it. Now we can continue uh, tucking this in at the top where the wire was. Completing it. There. It's all the way across. That's looking good. And like, I can, you have to shove it that way just a little. Looks like it's kind of pulling on the seam right here. All right, this side is temporarily in place. Here's what it looks like. Get a shot from the outside. Now to work on the bunk ends. I'll start from the outside. I think they're both the same size, so I don't think it matters which one goes on which end. So I'll start with this end and see if it fits. Right, for the bunk ends, it doesn't really have that little channel that you tuck it in. It actually just Velcros down on the sides and on the end, uh, just going to screw it into the back side. So I'm just going to kind of get it in place and get the Velcro on and then screw the bend in. Uh, it's got two flaps, well it's got three actually, so these two, um, this one goes on the inside, goes underneath the, the bed, this one folds up underneath the velcro under there, and then this last flap is the rain guard, it sits over the end like that. So I'm just going to flip this rain guard up, the drip edge or whatever they call it. I can get to the part that needs to be screwed down. So right here, I'm going to screw this down. All right, to start with, I'm just going to screw the back on first. Gives us a reference point, and then I'll tuck the sides in and everything. So I'm actually going to have to put some holes through here. I already have uh, old holes in this aluminum, so I'm going to try to match them up and hit them right on. And so then I'm going to pull the other side tight to make sure it's all even. Looks cool, right? Yeah, looks pretty close. So we'll just kind of go on down the line so I don't get any bulges in the middle. Reed came out here to help me. He said, uh, what are you doing to it? What are you fixing? That part's broken? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, good job. Always good to have help. 
right, here's what it looks like all tucked up and uh, with the rain shield down you can see underneath here got it out. you can see it too dark there you go both sides there just tucked up and around got that on there so we'll go inside and uh, put that bar in and zip up the sides I think so I think I'm going to put that support beam up and then zip up the sides zip the two canvases together and then see how it fits on the top because as I mentioned earlier I made this top from scratch and the old canvas seemed to pull a little tight when it was connected to the ends so I might have made the top an inch or two longer than the other top not really sure you know the exact dimensions so I'm um, going to get it zipped up, see where it fits, and I may end up uh, moving this piece of strip, put like a little board behind there and move it in a little closer so it doesn't pull so tight. So we'll start doing that and see how it fits. Support beam. Oh, it's looking good. Now, let's see how tight it is when I try to zip them on the corners here. I'm sure, it's going to pull fairly tight. That looks like the zipper starts from the bottom. Come yeah, on. I know this is probably going to be the hardest part of the whole deal. Luckily, this piece we can slide around a little bit. Closer. I can back it off once it's zipped together. All right, got it started. Yeah, there we go. You can see up here they got these little flaps that velcro over the end of the zipper. All right, I'm having some trouble trying to pull this tight enough to zip it up. There's too big of a gap here. So what I'm gonna try is uh, sliding the bed in and uh, loosening all that up and then once it's uh, zipped up, push it back out. Take this down. All right, that seemed to work. Loosened up enough. Now I can get enough slack here to zip these two together. Try sliding it back out and see if it uh, hopefully doesn't pull it too tight. All right, we did it. And let's see, looking how tight it is. This side actually looks pretty good over here. This side, it's like the whole thing needs to shift over. Oh, 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 thing this way. So I'm going to put the other end on and then I'll kind of adjust the top here to where it needs to be. I think I'll probably put this thing up now. Yeah, seems looking better. Maybe you can see I got a little extra. If I attach it right here to where it's supposed to be, it's kind of a lot of slack. So I may move that whole thing inward a little to tighten that up. Let's see. All right, I got both ends attached. And see, I'm having a little trouble with the corners. This corner here is stretched really tight. Like I can't get it into the corner. And the same with the other end of it. But if we go to the other side of the camper this bed here seems to have a little bit of an excess there's the other corner of it just 
there's like too much fabric. I don't know if these beds are the same size or not. <laughs> I think the mattresses are, but uh, slide outs might be a little longer on one side. So I think I'm just gonna take off the two ends, swap them, reinstall them, and see if it fits any better. All right, I just realized something. When I rebuilt this whole roof, I had to take the canvas off and I put it back up and the canvas just never did fit right. I thought I just kind of messed up on the dimensions of the roof or something. Well, I just flipped the two ends here and now it fits perfectly. So there is a left and right side to these uh, bunk ends. Even though the mattresses are the same size, the canvas is a different size. And I'll show you how it fits now. So here's the one end, you see, just nicely in the corner. The other side of that same corner. Looks good. Let's go to the other side of the camper. That one there fits nice. That side there fits nice. So, so as you can see, it does matter which end you put on which end. Uh, so if it doesn't fit right the first time, just swap them around. All right. Uh, I'm just going to kind of shift the canvas back and forth a little, put the door on, see if I can't get that to fit now. Canvas just pulls over and velcros to the door. We'll secure the inside. All right, on the inside here, just velcro it on this side too. Oh, so much better than it used to. Before I had problems with this door and I couldn't get it to seal right, I couldn't pull the fabric in enough to even velcro it. So this is pretty nice. Very nice. Let's see if I can open the screen a little bit. There you go. Get some fresh air in. Yeah, I'm happy with it. All right, even these seams are laying up better than they were now that I switched ends. These were pushed so far in I couldn't get this to flap to close. All I gotta do is cover that up. Looks good. All right, the only thing left is put those buttons around the outside here. So we have to actually install them onto the canvas. They give us that uh, bag of buttons and they give us these two black pieces here which slide over a player's. And if you put it just right, they clamp together like that. You put the button in there and squeeze them on. I haven't done this before, so let's see how that works. Okay, here's the two, see the two pieces they give you. And let's see. I gotta figure this out. All right, I'm back. I could not for the life of me squeeze that players hard enough to smash the end of this uh, button so it'd make it work. So I went in and found a C-clamp in my shop and I got them to fit on there. They don't fit real well, but I smashed them on there. And before I put a hole in my nice canvas, I'm going to practice on, I got a, an old t-shirt here. I got the collar, it's a little bit thicker. So I'm going to see if I can put one through here just to see if it works. So. So you see that this end it has like a little concave area where the button part goes. Then you put in your cloth. Whatever you're gonna use. Straighten it out. Ah, hold on. All right, got our material in there. Then your button. Top of that. It's not easy. It looked pretty easy when I just saw the instructions and I'm like, ah, oh, trying it's a whole nother story. Let's wind this down, make sure it lines up.
squeeze it together. button <laughs> just fell right off I don't know maybe I'm doing this wrong I've never put a button on before just smash this in I don't know, maybe it wasn't lined up right um, the inside here is velcroed so I'm not too worried about it. I think I think I'll just leave it hang like that ain't really hurting nothing I'll keep the buttons around just in case I figure it out, but for now, I think I'm just going to leave it like it is. All right, I'm going to call it done, so let's do a little uh, before and after a shot. All right, now that it's all put together, I'm gonna to go over some of the uh, tips that Bear Creek Canvas sent us with the canvas. First of all, it says it's important to realize that the tops are made of canvas and they may have some variations. And the new one says it will fit a little looser than your old one. Uh, but over time, as it weathers, it says it'll draw to the fit the framework properly. There's a good way to plan the installations, do it exactly the opposite of how you remove the old one, which is basically what we did. It wasn't too hard overall. Uh, taking care of the canvas, here's one that uh, I think a lot of people mess up, is it says, do not use any waterproofing or scotch guard, etc., on your new tent. It has all the treatment it needs for many years. So, you know, you see all those waterproofing sprays you can buy that are supposed to guarantee the waterproofing of your, your tent or your canvas. Uh, it's not needed. Uh, if you use any aerosol sprays like hairspray, insect repellents, deodorants, uh, any of that that comes in contact with the canvas will deteriorate that waterproofing also. And if you get it wet during camping, it says, you know, always ventilate and dry it out before you pack it up and store it for a long time. And 
Also, this being a brand new canvas, they suggest you spray it down with a hose and wet the whole canvas, and that'll help it uh, to kind of shrink up and fit too. And all the seams that they sew with, it's a, uh, it's a type of thread that when it gets wet, it expands and it closes up all those little needle hole gaps. So that'll help waterproof it also. So uh, it's getting late tonight. So tomorrow I'll take the hose out here. I'll just spray down the whole uh, camper and then just leave it up till it dries out. And I'll uh, pack it up and hopefully go camping soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Your turn to say bye.